Hey guys, Reeves here. Review 23. Let's take a look. Okay, so review 23. Have a rod, frictionless surface, frictionless pivot point, etc. Right? Gonna get that rest. I'm gonna get some disc, right? Coming this way. And it's gonna hit this rod. Okay, and stick. Okay, so we're gonna hit this rod and stick. Okay? So, asks a couple of questions. Right? Um, suppose the rod is much, has more massive than a disc. To give the rod as much angular speed, right? Angular speed spinning around this pivot point as possible, should the student make the disc hit the rod to the left of C, at C, or to the right of C? All right, so let's take a look. Um, the only way to change an object's angular momentum is to apply a force at some distance, which we call a torque, right? The bigger that torque, the bigger the change in angular uh, speed is going to be, okay? So I need to get the biggest torque on this, and a torque is a force times a distance, so, right, which is going to cause this, cause this guy to pivot around here. So the answer is to the right of C. Why? Because I want uh, this, you know, this, to the right of C, bigger distance gives me a bigger, right? Bigger, or let's call it X, equals uh, bigger, that's a B, torque. All right? Okay, so that is uh, A. Okay? Um, well, actually, that's only one, that, that's, that is correct, but there's another way you can look at this as well. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, for the disc itself, right, the disc, an object, will have angular momentum of what? M, V, R, okay? So, angular momentum has to be conserved, right? So, as I make the R, right, the distance bigger, I make the what? Angular uh, momentum bigger, right? Uh, angular momentum bigger, right? Which is gonna make uh, bigger uh, speed. Angular speed, that is. Okay, so that's another way that you could look at that same problem. Okay, all right, uh, B. On the internet, a student finds the following equation. There it is right there. Regardless of whether it's correct or not, does it agree with your quantitative reasoning in part A? Hmm, okay. Um, what did we say in part A? To give this a bigger angular momentum, I wanted my distance farther away, right, a bigger distance. So how is x, right, and omega related? Well, in this particular, they are correct, right? They are directly related, right? So since I have x directly related to omega, right, this equation looks good to me. Why? I would say there's my kind of reasoning, right? Say something like that in a brief, right? By the way, Briefly, without deriving an equation, you you could say that you're not deriving an equation. You're just saying, right? As the distance away from the pivot point gets bigger, right? My omega would get bigger. Right? So that's that guy there. Uh, C. Another student derives another equation, right? Without deriving the correct equation, can you tell that this equation is not plausible, right? Okay. So why isn't this plausible? All right. Um, well, let's take a look at what I really means. I is my moment of inertia, right? So it's kind of like, it's equivalent to my mass in F is equal to MA, right? So, right, as this gets bigger, I wouldn't expect that to get bigger, right? Right? So one reason is I, I would expect in moment of inertia, an omega, to be indirectly. So I would, I, I would, Omega, uh, let's say as I goes up, I would expect omega to go down. In this particular case, they're telling me that they're directly related. What about the mass of the disk, right? That's being thrown, right? I would say, right, because, right, uh, uh, L is equal, I would say, right, that um, as, well, really, L is equal to MVR, right? So, how is this related, right? So this is saying 
as the mass gets bigger, my real equation, right? There it is right there, saying as the mass gets bigger, my angles, my angle of momentum gets bigger. However, this is saying as my mass gets bigger, my angle of speed gets smaller. So here's another reason why this is not plausible, right? Uh, because really, um, M um, it should be, right? M should be directly related to omega. Okay, so that's that guy there. All right, so D, immediately before colliding with the rod, did this rotation inertia? So they're giving us some information, right? They want you to derive an equation. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, when I did this originally, I was trying to get something a little bit more elegant, but uh, I just didn't, right? Um, I, I don't know. I thought it would work out nicer. It's not pretty, but let's take a look. Okay, so it wants you to derive an equation for angular momentum, uh, speed, angular speed. So what do I have? Well, okay, we know that L before, angular momentum before, has to be equal to angular momentum after. So what am I going to have? I have uh, L of the disk plus L of the bar. Now this is going to be a crash and stick problem, right? So it's going to be L, right, plus uh, disk plus R, right? That's those two guys stuck together. Well, we know the bar is not moving, so that goes to zero, right? And if you read that problem, it tells you that the the, the angular momentum for the disk is m disk v zero x. All right, so what is L again? Don't forget L is gonna be what? I r, oh uh, no, I, sorry, omega, omega. And so in this particular case, I have two objects that are there now, right? So I have, and they tell you, they just tell you that the bar is I, the bar, the bar is I, right? And they tell you that the moment of inertia for the disk is m, disk x squared omega, okay? So omega is just gonna be equal to m disk v zero x divided by i plus m disk x squared. So there is my equation, right? Uh, derived for omega. Like I said, I was trying to get something a little bit more elegant, but uh, just not possible. Okay, and by the way, that, if you kind of take a look, that agrees with the equation that the student got off the internet, right? So that, that there, I, I believe, is D, right? Because that's D. What about E? Okay, so E says, right, consider the collision for which your equation in part D was derived, except now, suppose that this bounces backward, right? We bounce back, right? Um, is the post-collision angular speed of the rod when the disc bank bounces back greater than, less than, or equal to, the, or the same? Well, what does it have to be? Well, look, I, I'm going to, in case one, right, right, I'm going to get this disc, right, and I'm going to stick to it, right, and we're going to start to rotate, okay? In the second case, right, we're saying, you know what, this guy is coming this way, it's going this way, and then it's going to bounce back that way. Okay, so remember, angular momentum must be conserved, right? So which case gives me the biggest change, right, in angular momentum for the ball? Well, obviously it's the case where this guy bounces this way, here and here, right? So the ball, the disc, I should say, in the case where it bounces back, undergoes the biggest change in angular momentum. So for conservation laws, this guy here, right, has to swing clockwise, counterclockwise, I guess, with a bigger angular speed, right? So the answer is greater, and your reasoning is just what I kind of described right here, okay? All right, so that is 23.